finally, AMD might have something good with the RX 9000 series. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Jawa. Jawa's mission is to be the community for safely buying and selling PC parts at a reasonable price, offering low fees and great customer service, which I can definitely attest to as I personally bought this RTX 3070 from Jawa anonymously, and not only did it arrive quickly, but when I ran into an issue, they immediately replaced it with a flawless substitute and asked that I only send the old one back after I confirmed the new GPU worked great. And the best part is the price I got this card at was well below other their listings I could find anywhere else, likely thanks in part to Jawa's much lower seller fees of 9-12% to depending on when you join. In fact, this is probably the best platform for selling PC parts on the internet and I plan on making it my personal go-to. So if you're interested in buying or selling PC parts on a platform with low fees and great customer service, be sure to click the link in the description below and watch out for some of my hardware that will likely be popping up very soon. Okay, so the RX 9070 XT and the 9070, these are two Two cards which at least I have definitely been looking forward to, however there's been a lot of mixed information when it comes to the release date as well as the performance of these cards. But recently we got a ton of new information so let's go ahead and dive into it starting off with some information that comes from videocards.com in relation to the release date for these brand new cards which should hopefully be competing with the 5070 and the 5070 Ti yet offering you a good 16 gigabytes of VRAM at hopefully a much lower price. But in any case, according to videocards.com, they state, quote, it looks like AMD is set to formally announce the new series by the end of this month as revealed by Benchlife, which Benchlife actually stated, if nothing unexpected happens, AMD will hold a press conference for the RX 9000 series based on the RDNA 4 GPU architecture at the end of February, but the details are still being confirmed. So that would definitely be a pretty big update as the last bit of information we got from AMD is that it was going to be, I guess you could say, delayed until March. A lot of people were originally actually expecting them around January, as apparently there was a pre-briefing at CE for a bunch of various different reviewers and press, but for some reason, they just simply didn't actually show it at CES. And I surmise that, hmm, maybe Radeon was once again following into their old bad habits of waiting to see what Nvidia does, being scared and then trying to drop like $50 off the price and thinking that was gonna be good enough. But the more we hear, the more I'm starting to think that maybe that's only part of the story and maybe Radeon isn't pulling Radeon and you might actually get a really good graphics card this year round. Now I could be huffing copium, but when we take a look at the specs of the RDNA 4 RX 9070 and 9070 XT, well, actually these cards might be a bit more powerful than I was expecting. Now the 9070, yeah, I was expecting that to come in somewhere around a 5070 as this has 3,584 shaders running at around 2.52 gigahertz and 16 gigabytes of VRAM according to videocards.com on a 256-bit bus, which does give you 640 gigabytes per second of total memory bandwidth. Now that would actually put it in terms of specs very, very close to something like an RTX 5070, but instead of giving you 12 gigabytes of VRAM, it would actually be giving you 16. And that would actually be a much better purchase if one, the price is actually right for once, and if FSR 4 actually competes with the current DLSS we have right now, both of which we simply won't know for sure until the end of the month. But I do have some information that we'll discuss in terms of the pricing at the end of the video, but the RX 9070 XT might be even more impressive. The fully unlocked GPU appears to have 4,096 shaders running at nearly three gigahertz, a pretty massive improvement over the 9070, and I actually think there's a lot more room in the tank even beyond that. So AIB models might be pretty crazy, but this will have the same 16 gigabytes of VRAM on the same 256 bit bus for the same 640 gigabytes per second. So it's definitely gonna have a lot less memory bandwidth than the 5070 Ti, but in terms of raw performance, I actually expect it'll be very close to the 5070 Ti. Now it could be a little bit faster, it could be on par, or it could be a little bit just a tiny bit behind the 5070 Ti, and I do expect, yeah, it'll probably be five or 10% behind the 5070 Ti, but only time will tell. And if they bring this in at the right price, once again, it'll be a really, really powerful card. And I actually do think that we should wait to see what AMD has to offer before we rush out to try and day one buy a 5070 Ti or 5070. It would just be the smart move. Don't get me wrong, I think the 5070 Ti is probably gonna be the best card of the generation as they're knocking $50 off the price and giving you more performance and a decent amount of VRAM as well as memory bandwidth. So I think at $750, it'll be a good card, but I would wait to see what AMD has 
this might be a banger. But again, the price has got to be right. And there were some rumors floating around that apparently it was gonna be like $900 or something crazy. At the time I said, no way is that gonna happen. Well, Frank Azer actually did comment on this and basically said that, yeah, $899 starting point was never part of the plan. So here's what I think was gonna happen with the RX 9070 and 9070 XT. I believe they wanted to target 550 and 650 for these cards, assuming that Nvidia would charge the same price as last year or possibly even more. More, but that didn't happen. Nvidia actually dropped the price by $50, gave you more performance, and they also, and this is a big one, unveiled DLSS4 Transformer Upscaling. This new model of upscaling is significantly better in every situation that I've seen at least versus the current DLSS implementation that we have. And it seems to be very easy to implement in games that already have DLSS. So you may soon see basically every single DLSS game suddenly get a lot more clear and a lot better in motion. Is that something that AMD can actually counter with FSR4? I have my doubts. It is possible, but I assume that FSR4 was created to actually go head to head with the current DLSS we have now, not DLSS4, which has just started to roll out into more and more games. So that puts AMD at a disadvantage when it comes to price to performance. And that's why I think those two factors have forced AMD to drop their prices and probably rebate people as well as work on FSR4 and get as many games down as possible when it goes to launch and make sure that the software is as ready as possible for RDNA 4. And so I think you'll see AMD actually target 450 and 550 now for the 9070 and the 9070 XT. And at that pricing, I'm very curious as to whether you guys feel like it's worth it. I mean, if FSR 4, for example, gives you the same image quality at quality FSR upscaling as DLSS does at balanced or performance, is it worth saving the $200 to get the 9070 XT? I think for a lot of people, the answer will be yes, especially considering at least they do have pretty decent upscaling now, assuming what we heard from CES is what we're going to get in our homes with their new upscaling implementation. But I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Do you think that the 9070 XT, say for $550 or $200 less than the 5070 Ti, giving you maybe the same or at most probably 10% less performance than that card, is it worth saving $200 and getting a bit worse upscaling performance? Let me know in the comments below. I certainly think it is interesting that this will be probably the lowest price card with 16 gigabytes that you'll be able to get your hands on. And I think that's a huge selling point as well. But with it coming out potentially by the end of this month, or I'd assume at the latest, early March, that's actually going to be coming up really, really soon. And not only will I be covering every bit of news coming up to the 9000 series, as this is AMD's big chance to finally upset the market and get gamers on their side, but also I think the AIB models will be really interesting with the 9000 series as well, as I believe there's going to be more overclocking headroom with those cards than there are with Nvidia. But again, we won't know until the end of this month. But regardless, I do think this might actually be a really good generation. But either that's just what I think. Do you think that the 9070 XT and 9070 will be good cards? Or do you think that AMD is gonna try and just knock $50 off the price of Nvidia once again? and just completely fail the launch. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia release new GPUs. Also, if you wanna see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.